So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Ethan, okay, you got another wheel lock. We get it. They're weird. They're neat. You know, there's got to be something else interesting there that you can that you can show us. We've seen enough wheel locks. But I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think that you have seen a wheel lock like this one. Because this wheel lock, in fact, is not at all a wheel lock. This is a muzzle-loading air rifle from the 18th century. This wind bush or wind rifle at first glance looks like a conventional wheel lock sporting rifle, but upon picking it up, it is noticeably heavy for its size and several features you might notice are purely cosmetic, such as the vent and patch box. Though it appears to have a wheel lock mechanism, the lock is not used to produce a spark to ignite a charge of black powder. Instead, the rifle is powered by an air reservoir in the buttstock, accessed via a trap door opened by pushing the screw in on the lower left of the butt plate. Other air rifles by Wenzlau are also known to be disguised as traditional flintlock Jaeger rifles. They are dated to the mid 18th century. Wenzlau was the court gun maker to the landgrave of, big German word here, we'll put on the screen. I, I'm not even gonna try. Circa 1747 to 1784, the swamped barrel has a traditional German rifling, blade and notch sights with Wenzlau inscribed on the top behind the rear sight. You'll find a beaded border design at the breech end of the barrel. On the left stock flat, you'll find a plate engraved with a dog chasing a boar, but on this plate, you'll also find a switch and release button. The rifle has double set triggers and iron furniture. The butt plate has the noted trap door compartment and is inscribed with the number five. The forend and ramrod tip and left face washers are made of staghorn and the stock has raised teardrop flats, raised relief shell and floral carving and a rounded cheek rest with scroll accents. So we know who made this, we know where it came from but we don't quite know how this thing works. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to show it to you today. If you know anybody or you yourself know a little bit more about these German air rifles, I would love to know how they work. Unfortunately, we don't have the time or the resources here today to tear this apart and understand the basic functions. But I'm hoping that this might pique somebody's interest out there to maybe share a little bit more about this fantastic piece and its function with us. We've seen a growth in interest of air rifle hunting in recent years, and I think uh, this is just another one of those ticks on the muzzleloader scoreboard that uh, muzzleloaders did at first and, uh, and have been around for several hundred years. We have record of air rifles going back to at least the 1500s um, and something that I think that's really cool. It's something that we don't necessarily think about, um, but air rifles have been around for a long time and they've been disguised as muzzleloaders for a long time. This one is still a muzzleloader, although the charge is not ignited by an air rifle, it still does load through the muzzle. We have our ramrod here. There's no breech loading apparatus here. Um, it's just powered by air, which is super neat. You have a, a much quieter and uh, maybe at times, especially as we head through, uh, through 2021 here, maybe a more economic way of shooting a muzzleloader in this wheel lock. Just like the description said, when you pick up this rifle, it is heavy. When I compare it to some of the German Jaegers that I've looked at here this week, it's maybe two or three times as heavy as those pieces. And uh, it's not necessarily heavy at the muzzle. The swamp, the barrel profile gives us a nice balance out here at front, but there's tremendous weight in the stock here. I have to assume from some kind of air tank or air reservoir that is back here in the butt stock. It might be hard to tell on camera, but this is considerably wider than some of the other rifles that we've taken a look at. We mentioned that there are several purely cosmetic details about this piece to make it appear as if it is a wheel lock muzzle litter. Uh, that mainly being the vent hole, which doesn't go anywhere. You can stick a pin in there and it, you just stop with the barrel and the patch box here are purely cosmetic. There's no way to open our patch box. It doesn't slide, but the maker has gone so far as to with the additional iron plate here at the end, it has been fitted to the stock as if it is a separate piece and can be removed. As we look closer at this piece, when we get back to the butt stock here, we have an oddly placed screw on the butt plate. If we push that screw down, we open up a rather flush trap door that leads us to a port that I believe would be used to fill the air tank or air reservoir that is within the butt stock. Up here at the lock, we have a fairly traditional, albeit a little more bulbous wheel lock here. It doesn't function 
like a wheel lock though. Um, our arm here is under some kind of severe tension. We think that could possibly be part of the cocking mechanism for the air rifle, although we're not sure. Like I said, we haven't been able to take this apart and investigate further. On the underside here, we have a nice large German trigger guard with a traditional German paddle style trigger here for our set trigger and then a simple post front trigger, really light trigger on this piece. You think about it and it's, and it's, uh, and it's released. Really neat, uh, really neat to see that on an original air rifle like this. A pretty traditional rear notch sight and a traditional blade front sight. Again, like we see with a ton of these original pieces, we have a very short sight height. Uh, when you're posting up with this rifle, you have just a barely a sixteenth of an inch filed away here for a front sight to rest in on the rear sight. Um, it's very comfortable though. When you hold the rifle, it's uh, really on target and ready to go. I think a testament to the build quality again of some of these original pieces. We have the maker's mark and engraving here on the top flat of the barrel, just like any traditional muzzleloader that we see here, especially those coming from Europe. There's a little bit of detailed carving around the stock of this piece. We have some carving at the tang, carving around the side plate side and the cheek rest, as well as around the lock. We have a simple border. There's a little bit of engraving on the wheel lock parts here in kind of the key areas that we see a lot of wheel lock engraving happening. Not really on the lock plate itself, but on um, cock and some of the spring assemblies there. As we rotate down to the bottom side, we can see our trigger guard is, I, I believe, just purely inlet and maybe held in with a couple pins here and there. We have some nice carving towards the muzzle of the rifle. And as we head up to our entry pipe, we have some more carving surrounding a nice filed banded entry pipe here. Just two ramrod pipes, the entry pipe and this kind of three quarters ramrod pipe having similar and um, similar shaping and filing as our entry pipe does. Interestingly on this piece, we have a sling swivel out here at front. Uh, we don't have one in the back, like a stud, like we would traditionally see. I think that would maybe take up space that we need um, for the air reservoir here. Instead, we have a cast into the trigger guard sling catch back here. So you can connect your sling from here to here. Um, not as far back as we traditionally think of it being. And I kind of wonder how that would balance with so much weight back here in the rear end of the rifle. At the muzzle, you can see we have rather deep round bottom grooved rifling in this 56 caliber rifled barrel. Very similar to the kind of big bore air rifles and hunting air rifles that we're starting to see pop up here in the United States as, uh, as outdoorsmen try to get some more time in the field. Overall, really neat piece. There are several muzzle loading air rifles out there. I think famously, we know that the Lewis and Clark expedition had, I think, a couple air rifles on that expedition, um, but this is dating much earlier than that trip. And uh, I mean, like I said earlier, we have reference and, and record of air rifles going back to at least the 1500s. Um, so it's just a neat piece of history, not necessarily black powder history, but uh, still muzzleloading history. And uh, as always, it's neat to hold something like this, something unique in my hands. I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about this fantastic piece, please visit the Rock Island Auction Company on their social media pages. They've been posting a lot of great pictures and articles and documentation about these pieces that we're showing you here today for you to add to your own research and to expand your own reference library and, uh, and knowledge base when it comes to muzzleloaders and antique firearms. If you know anything about muzzleloading air rifles like this one, or know maybe some of the particulars about how a model like this would function, please email me at ilovemuzzleloading at gmail.com. I would love to talk about it and, uh, and understand how this interesting piece works just a little bit more. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.